Hey everyone, I am so excited today. We have a special guest with me joining. Um, we have Gail Wanzi here with me today and she is a graduate, a recent graduate of our Classy Career Girl Career Coach Certification Program. I am so excited for you all to meet her. So welcome Gail, I'm excited to do this with you. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been through a journey and I'm 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 so excited yeah. to share every, with everyone your journey and your story and it's very inspiring and now you get to help people and coach people as well too. So tell me more, you know, about you. Tell me about, you know, before you came became a coach, kind of the career you were in mm -hmm. um and kind of what are what what that was like and kind of your your transition into coaching. Yeah, so uh, my career has been in, in human resources within like the retail or entertainment space. And I mean, I've gravitated to human resources even in college because I always knew, well, when I knew I wanted to work in, in fashion, but I knew I wasn't a designer. And so I didn't know what that meant, right? Like what other roles can you have in retail? And HR just seemed like a natural fit because I do love working with individuals, helping them identify like their career path or their development. Um, and even like on the recruitment side of things, like finding jobs, right? Finding like it's like a, it's like a dating situation, basically, like finding your ideal job, right? Um, and so I gravitated in, into that space in my career. And then over time, like the conversations I was having with individuals really became, again, about their own career journey. And I realized I had a bit of insider knowledge because I'm sitting in HR, I'm doing the interviews, I'm having career development conversations, organizational conversations. and that I'm talking and sharing with my friends and they're like, oh, that's great. And it just kind of naturally flowed from there. Um, so that's, it was like an informal coaching process. And then I launched my business on the side and then I put it on the parking lot, I would say for a little bit, cause I got distracted with other things. And then I obviously found classic career girl and I was like, this is what I need. It's a structure, it's a, it's a success path, right? To like figure out what steps are next for you. Um, and then also helping you build your business, right? Because you just don't have that in most career coaching programs, right? Where it's like building your business and building um, a successful career coach um, coaching business. And so I think it's just been great over the last, I don't know, is it seven months now, eight months? Kind of crazy yeah. um, that it flew by so fast. Um, and you know identifying people to work with and i did a workshop on you know job searching and tips in that regard and getting clients from there it just kind of snowballed in a sense right i was like i was just hoping i'll you know help maybe three or four people and then it was like eight people attended my workshop and i was like oh okay great like <laughs> i'm on the path i'm on the right path so yes you yeah. were <laughs> and one of the things like i'll always remember our first conversation because you we talked about traveling and how much you like yeah, love to travel and everything too. So tell me how, like, um, you know, that, tell me about that passion too. And like how, how you yeah. wanted to fit that into your career. No, it's true. So I grew up, um, both my parents had, uh, jobs that required them to like live abroad and work abroad. And so I would say the travel bug started for me very young as a child moving around with them for their career. And and transparently, they were in government, basically, and I'm not a government girl <laughs> at all. That's not my that's not my mode. But I wanted to have some love of travel incorporated into my work, and I wanted a role, a job that would allow me that flexibility to do it. And so, again, career coaching you can do it anywhere. You can help people anywhere, and you can and you can travel and work with people all over the world, basically, because ultimately it's all the same thing. We all want to find the right role for us. And sure, there's some employment law components there, but by and large, finding your dream job is universal and the steps to do it can be universal. So that's kind of yeah. the love of travel, the love of career development kind of merged <laughs> together and creating that flexibility for me to, to be able to travel more. Yeah, I love that you say that because sometimes people ask like, oh, can I be a career coach? I live in this place or this place. Yeah. And I'm, I totally agree with you. Like wherever yeah. you live, people need this type of coaching and support. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when you when you were thinking of becoming a career coach, like what were some of those like problems and challenges you were having um, kind of like in the beginning? So I think a baseline because I love to talk. So for me, it's like, and this is also an, as an HR professional, you have to listen. Like you really just have to listen to that individual and the difference between being a coach versus being, I would say like your HR partner, you know, 
you need to tell me what you want to work on. You already actually have the answers. I'm just kind of steering you towards like that next step. So that was a challenge for me. It's like, okay, listening and then making sure I understand and helping them move along that, that path of what's next for them. Because I can automatically, I start, you know, I've talked about this. Like I will see yeah. the path ahead of you, like 10 steps. And I'm like, here's what you need to do, da, 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 da. But I'm like, slow down <laughs> because they may not be, um, quite there yet, or they may not realize that that's where they want to go. So for me, it was really kind of slow down, listen, um, and then help them kind of on their, on the path that they need to be on. Um, and then the other thing, like I mentioned was the, the business part of it all and, um, the sales component, because it can be overwhelming thinking about selling, like, sure. Like I said, I love to talk, but I also don't necessarily want to like talk about what I can do for you in a sense, like get you to purchase this program or whatever. But I love that going through this course with you, it's like the natural flow of how to really talk about your services, but you're not talking about your services. Like you're really just kind of sharing information, gaining that trust and understanding and converting it into a sale. And I mean, quite honestly, I had a really great conversation last week with an individual and I would, it was just more so like, here's what I would do. Cause she was at a crossroad. Do I purchase a pro do I purchase my program or do I go and purchase a, um, like a course at a university for something? And I was like, well, hold on. Like, what's the, what's your ultimate goal? What are you trying to strive for? And then through that conversation, she realized not right now. Do I need to go and take that course? Um, but I probably could work with you in another component, right. That, that and, and service that I offer, right. Cause it's one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'm launching a group coaching session coming up in the next month. And so it was just a, a natural dialogue and didn't feel as salesy. So those are the two challenges, right? Like listening and then how to make sales natural, like a natural process. Yes. Yeah. So. And I know I listen to your coaching sessions because that's one of the my favorite things too is like listening and providing feedback. And one of my things for you, I was like, we got to get you creating content because you have so many great ideas <laughs> yeah. and strategies and you are like, you're 10 steps ahead. And so I was like, we got to get you creating content like on yeah. weekly or daily, you know, because yeah. you're so, yeah. your, 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 your strategy is like through the roof. And then, um, and then, yeah, like the sales, that's, that's totally common as far as like figuring out how to sell, but doing it naturally and feeling good about it. Um, mm -hmm. And so it, it sounds like I'm glad you're having those conversations and because ultimately you're helping people and they're yeah. getting value from those conversations as well. So they walk away with value mm -hmm. after, after the call, not like we've all been there where we just feel yeah. like salesy and we feel like we yeah. got sold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, That's true. Yeah. Learning how to sell <laughs> the right way. Okay. So, uh, and you, but you had already also had some clients. I remember, oh, yeah. I remember our conversation. You said you, you actually had, you had clients, you were doing, you were doing well, but I think yeah. you were, was there like overwhelmed out there or what? Overwhelmed. overwhelmed. Okay. So tell me yeah. about that. Yeah. So, and it was so because you're right. One of our first conversations, we were talking about, well, how many, I, how many clients can you have at one time? I think you would say like, ideally you could do four or five or something a month. And I was like, no, <laughs> I tried <laughs> to do two and two was too much for me. And what it was is because I was, what I like to joke around with like some of my friends, we talk about building the plane and flying it at the same time. And it was just too much all at once for me um, because I was trying to build like their onboarding plan and all of the little components, basically what I thought would make a successful coaching experience for them. And so I would ultimately, I was just doing too much and I burned myself out with those just like two clients that I had in one year. Okay. <laughs> so because I was <laughs> suffering from what I will also say, like perfectionism, right. And like perfectionism stopping you from moving forward. So I definitely there, like now I, could, I had more than two clients at, at one time. But it's because, well, one, I had the great tools that you've created, so I wasn't reinventing the wheel. And then I was, <clears throat> excuse me, I was also like pacing myself and saying, and again, using like the 90 day plan, right? And saying, okay, here's what my ultimate goal are for the 90 days. Here's what it is at 30 days. Here it is weekly, you know, and daily. And that allowed it to be more manageable for myself. Whereas before, like I said, I was just like going in and trying to do everything all at once. And it took the joy out of it. And it became more of like a chore. And I was like, I can't do this. And so I had to like shut it down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. And then you were like, let's restart it, but the right way. And that's when you- but The right way. Right. Right. 
Right. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned the, the joy too, because like as career coaches, we're helping people love their work. And if we're not fulfilled and happy, yes. it's kind of like, we're not living up to what our job is as yeah. career coaches. That's true. So. It felt like a bit of a fraud. Cause I'm like, Oh, you're going to you know, this is like cheering them on to go after. And I'm like, Oh, I'm absolutely miserable right now. Like this is not <laughs> what I envisioned for myself. And then, you know, I had to take a step, step back self-care and then say what's really important. And thankfully I found you know, classic career girl. And I'm like, okay, this is what I need. <laughs> so how did you find out about classic career girl? So I quite honestly, I think I joined your like email list, like year, like I, I was looking through my emails to be like, what was the first email that I got from Anna? <laughs> and it was, I think like 2019 or something, 2020 oh, wow. around that time. And so I was getting your emails and I was like, cause at that point, this was also when I had just started so I found you, I started my coaching business, I got burnt out, and then I just put everything on the back burner until last year. So um, I want to say it might have been like Instagram or something that like prompted me to kind of then sign up for your emails um, on, on career coaching. And um, so that's kind of where it started. And then it, like I, then last year, I think I got an email from you and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm ready for this. Like, this is the right time for me now. Um, and I just jumped on it basically. So, but yeah. And what did you first think? Like when you joined, when you started like orientation module one, like what were your kind of first thoughts in those first calls? Um, my first thought was one, I love the structure. Like, I, I feel like I'm probably like a broken record at this point, but I'm like, I love that I had structure for me and it was laid out for me. And like, I got to see who I was going to be in the same cohort with. And we were all in different phases of our career coaching business. Um, and so it was just nice that onboarding, uh, session, which obviously, so I joined right after onboarding, right? Because I had like responded and then I'd missed the onboarding. So I watched the recording. Um, and then I joined the next session, like the Q and a, and that was great to like have the live dialogue with everyone. But I just, I love that it was again, like a clear path of like, okay, here's what you're going to do each month. Here's what like the, you know, the Q and a that's going to happen. And then I could plan like, my work and life into it to say, okay, this week I'm going to review these modules and you know, whatever it is. So yeah, it was, I enjoyed that first. I mean, every month yeah. was great because it was very clear, like what I needed to focus on. So. Yeah. And we had another call too, because you've mentioned that you, well, there's a lot going on. You're very busy too. Like you're, you're doing yeah. this on top of all the other things, but you were still able to balance the work as yeah. you went through as yeah. well too. So no, it's so true. It was doable. busy. <laughs> Yeah, it was very busy, like personally and and work and everything. And I thought, oh, I've got to be a bit cuckoo right now to try and do it right now. But it was because it was so well planned. It didn't um, it didn't take away. And I think um, I'm trying to remember. I think you had said something along the lines of like uh, basically where you put your focus is where things grow, right? And so because I had like, I had taken some time and I was focusing on this and it really flourished because I had dedicated that time to it. Um, and that's really all that it is. Like we all have to just manage our time. It's like, again, you, this program really was really helpful in saying, okay, here's where to focus your time. Even if we think about job searching and how many people spend so much time on tasks that don't have the biggest impact. Right. And I'm not necessary. I remember you kept saying like what you need to launch your business are, you know, a way to find clients and a way to um, host the meeting. And like, it was just very basic. Like I was like, cause I thought, Oh, I have to get a website. I have to do all these things. And it's like, no, you actually don't need that right now. <laughs> you know? So we'll do that later. <laughs> yeah. It'll be later. And it's, it's coming. Right. But like, I can yeah. still start down this path of, of this business um, with some very basic things. So that I already have. And one of your first steps I remember is you got busy creating your live workshop and, and yeah. you took off. So tell me about like yeah. that first, I feel like that, that was kind of your first step. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was so scary too, because it was like, you know, I'm like, what am I doing? What am I going to be talking about? And sure. I had some ideas. And then we met and you were like, okay, here's the framework. <laughs> and like, here's your calendar of, of events. Like what your communication is to your, you know, your email list or your social media um, community or whatever. And I was like, okay. Um, and it was funny. Like I was, I built the content, but then I was also asking people like, does this make sense? This is something you would, would want to hear from. Um, and then you know, very small email list, right. To family and friends or friends of friends to be like, Hey, I'm having this workshop 
on the job search journey and what are the things you need to do for, to prepare yourself. Like obviously it included your interviewing skill, like tips. It included um, like how to enhance your resume. Networking was a big piece of it as well. Um, oh, but first of all, first and foremost, mindset. <laughs> like it was started off yeah. with mindset, mindset and making sure you have the right mindset in your job search journey. Um, and so that was exciting. Like it was good to build that out. And it was things that I had kind of, I feel like over the years put together and thought like, okay, this is what makes sense. And so, um, and now it's a digital product, right? But like that workshop and hosting two sessions and getting the people that attended um, and their participation was great and got me thinking like future content as well um, of things that I didn't get to cover because there's so much out there uh, to really talk about in that career space. So, but it was, it was good that you forced me to have like a, a date to be like, here's when you're going to go, because I probably would have dragged on much longer, you know, if you hadn't have said, when you, when are you going to launch? And I was like, uh, January? <laughs> yeah. What day in January? <laughs> and I, yeah, because most people have a, a product in them, a digital product. Like I knew you had, we, we know that you had one in you, you know? So it's really just yeah. about setting the date, which is the hardest part. You know, mm -hmm. having that framework, the steps, this is what you're going to do, this is your social media calendar, and then it is easier to kind of check it off and, and move mm -hmm. forward. And then you, um, I, and I mentioned this at graduation too, I didn't hear from you. And then all of a sudden yes. we had another call and you're like, I did it and this happened and this happened. I got a call yeah. and a client and booked it. And I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> you did it. It's okay. true. So, what, so it's you had true. the workshop, like what were some of the results of that workshop? So I had the workshop and then it led into like a sales conversation, right? To talk more about what I can do, um, do for them, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. And so one person had said like, she really, she didn't book the sales conversation, which was fine, but she's like, she loved it so much. And she asked if she could send the recording on, um, you know, to her family member who was also going through job search. And I was like, sure, why not? And I, but I didn't think I'm like, what am I charging? And I'm like, it's not even, it's just a live stream basically of this, of the, of the training. And I was like, here you go. <laughs> and, um, so that was great. So that was one person. And then, um, two other people were like, yeah, I would love to work with you. And so we, you know, built a little, um, I wouldn't say it's, it's not a 90 day coaching program because they weren't ready for it yet. And I was like, let me just test out what this would look like for them, um, for a client. And so it was just one-on-one, -on -one, like a few sessions with them on, uh, their job search strategy. And one person actually over the course of that, of two months of working with her, she ended up switching jobs twice and finding, um, with increasing authority and money. And so she was, and she sent me the nicest message being like, if it wasn't for you, I would never have gone for that other job. Right. Cause I met her, she did my workshop. She already had an offer for another a job elsewhere. She took it. She learned really quickly within, I would say like a month that she was overqualified for the position and another company approached her. And so she was hesitant. Like, I've only been at this place for a month. Should I really go for it? And I was like, yes, it's all about your career development. Don't worry about this company that you've been with for one month, <laughs> you know, like have the conversation interview. And I told her, don't accept the first offer. Like, Ladies, do not accept the first offer. We always do, and we shouldn't. Yeah. We should negotiate for more. It's just a starting point. They expect it. So do it. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was like, go for it. So now she's super happy. She's like, if it wasn't for you, I would never have known my worth. And I was like, you knew yeah. your worth. You just had to get to that place of acceptance, you know, of like, you, you know, she's got this. And so that was one of the happy, like, was one of the best moments for me where she was just like, thank you for helping me recognize my worth. And I was like, that's what I do. Like, that's why I love this type of work because it's much more than just like, you got a job. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. I mean, it cha you can change your life, you know, with just that, mm -hmm. that mindset and the confidence. And that yeah. is why these people, everyone should work with you. Go, <laughs> go hire <laughs> Gail. Cause I, I feel like you're like that cheerleader that you need and on your side, you know, to go, go get that raise. I needed yeah. you many years ago when I was negotiating my salary for sure. <laughs> What do you think would have happened then, you know, if you didn't join certification, if you didn't follow the plan, where do you think you would be? Oh, I know where I would be. I would be in the same space I was, you know, a few years ago thinking, oh, I'm going to launch this business and then not really doing it, like really not going for it and kind of sitting in a space of like, what's next? Because I think what this program does for you 
it gives you the skills to go out there and create this dream career for you um, that works for you and will allow you to be allow you to continue to be successful. So I think again, if I hadn't have found this, I probably would be sitting at my you know virtual desk, right? Being like, okay, another <laughs> work meeting in, in corporate America. Um and not having that what I would also call like a creative outlet of helping and having a bigger impact than just within the small like four box company, so to speak. So yeah. and I it's good. It's like a healthy balance, right? Like let's be clear. I'm still I'm doing both right now, but it's also because I enjoy both, right? Where versus feeling like I have to do something, right? And like I actually have yeah. joy in my corporate day job but then also in my career coaching business, which yeah. I don't know what happened if I hadn't had gone through this certification. Exactly. I love that too. Yeah. The joy of, of being able to coach and impact others as well too. And you mentioned yeah. also that you were, you were scared before as well too. Like, um, you know, do you feel, do you still feel scared? Like how do you feel as far as that, as far as the changes? I mean, listen, I still feel scared only because, so the content I put on, um, on my Instagram page, I like the videos and I reshare on TikTok, right? TikTok has an entirely different, bigger audience for videos. And the other day I had a video that had like a thousand views, over a thousand views. And I like lost it. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> over a thousand people have seen me. And so that's the kind of scare, right? That I get is that as, you know, in terms of like, oh my gosh, people are seeing me. <laughs> um, but it's good. Like it's all, it's all good. Um, and I think we want to be scared a little bit in our job. At least I do. Like I want a little, I want a job that challenges me. I want work that challenges me in the best possible way. And so I think the moment I no longer feel challenged is where I'm like, okay, if I can do this with my eyes closed, blindfolded, all that stuff, right? Like then I need a new challenge. I need something more. And so this, um, the certification launching my business, it's keeping me challenged and engaged and looking for new ways. Like I do love strategy, right? I do love planning and thinking through like what's next. And so in my own business, I find fulfillment in that um, because I don't want to get into that, uh, like what we would say, like a hamster wheel, right? You're continually doing the same thing over and over again. But with coaching, you can do many different things. Like it doesn't have to be the same formula. Um, it just depends on where you are, right? And your, in your journey, so to speak. Yep, exactly. I know when I listened to um, some of your coaching sessions, I was like, have you ever thought of this specialization or this no. specialization? You know, I because yeah. you do have, yeah, you do have so many strengths as, and like w when it comes to strategy, that's needed in a lot of different areas. So yes, I feel like more options opened up to you for potential coaching opportunities. It's true. A lot of the, I felt like a lot of the coaching um, sessions that I had, it was all like their business, entrepreneur business, like coaching and developing in that sense. And I loved it. And it's true. Like you came back to me, you're like, I feel like you should be doing <laughs> business coaching. And I was like, really? I'm like, I was like, well, now that you say it, I'm like, yes, actually you're right. Because the majority of my coaching sessions were business ones. And I'm like, then there's that moment of imposter syndrome. I'm like, well, I'm still building yeah. my business, but, um, but I did have some great ideas and I want to help others grow their business. And so why not? <laughs> I love that. I love that. So what would you say, what's your final, you know, piece of wisdom to someone who is thinking about becoming a coach, but kind of where you were before kind of burnt out, overwhelmed? What would you, what would you say to them? Just do it. <laughs> like if you, if you genuinely, um, if you think like what I would say, if I was to say my earlier self or someone else, like I would say, think about what is your, um, ultimate motivation, dream, life? What does it look like? And would you say that career coaching, having a career coaching business, your own business, allow you to have that life that you that you dream of, that you have, have a vision for? If the answer is yes, then do it. If the answer is, I don't know, maybe no, then hold and wait, right? Until it's right there. But if it's a yes, because then, or if it's even a maybe, it's a yes. So go for it. <laughs> Right. And go just go down the path, have the conversation, reach out to me. I'm happy to talk, talk you through it. Um, because I really do believe it can only add value. So, and I, I can't, I have, do not regret it one bit. So. I love that. 
Well, congratulations on your graduation officially. Where can people find out more about working with you? So I'm on Instagram and my uh, company name is my initial. So G-N, like Gail Wanze, um, at, uh, sorry, G-N Bespoke Career Consulting. So, and I'm also on your directory. <laughs> so yes, you are. find me so, there yeah, as well. If you go to classycareergirl.com forward slash directory, you can find all of our coaches and you can find Gail on there and you can actually find um, her calendar as well. So you can go mm -hmm. book a session with her and check her out um, and hear, hear more about her. So thank you so much, Gail. I'm excited for you. you. It's been a pleasure working with you and I can't wait to continue to support you and help you. And thanks for being here. Good job. Thank you, Alana. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Awesome. Bye, everyone. Bye.